Okay, so the first thing I want to show you in this uh, next video here is a feature called Split Body, which is here in the Modify panel, and it's right about there. Uh, so the way this works is you can create a sketch and then split a piece of geometry into two separate pieces of geometry, uh, sort of through a curve. So I'll go ahead and make that sketch. We'll go to Sketch and Create Sketch, and I'm going to hold the left mouse button down over the work plane. Go ahead and select it. And I have a cut in here somewhere. I'm not entirely sure where it is, so I may be able to see it if I go to uh, Display Settings, Visual Style, and I'll do uh, Shaded with Hidden Edges. And I think that's it right there. So if I wanted a curve that kind of went like that, I can kind of make sure that I'm setting everything up properly. So I'm going to make a sketch. And uh, we will start with a three-point arc, just for the heck of it. So the way this works is I'll click and then we'll do another click here and then you can draw your arc shape out and then I'm going to make a line here from this point uh, sort of horizontally and you can see I've uh, I need to go ahead and do a right click and hit OK and then we'll terminate that line I've got my little tangent constraint kind of by, by default there so even though this line isn't horizontal um, I'm it's sort of worrying more about being tangent to the curve than horizontal I think I can come in here click this and then grab uh, this horizontal vertical constraint and it'll go ahead and straighten the entire thing out because it's making this horizontal and maintaining uh, that tangency there so now this is going to be a complete cut I'll go ahead and say stop sketch and we can go to modify and then split body I'll go ahead and select the uh, piece of geometry here from my body to split and for the splitting tool go ahead and, and uh, select that and now I can come and grab this curve and it will basically just extrude that curve into a cutting surface so I can go ahead and say okay and if you'll notice over here I currently have one body but I'm about to have I think three yeah there we go so it's going to be this piece and this piece and then kind of our original here so now that these are actually different pieces, uh, what I can do is m sort of do some modifications to them and then maybe recombine them. So uh, this is a, an operation where, for instance, if you had like an X-Acto knife or, or a, a box cutter knife, there's one of those examples uh, in the YouTube tutorials, uh, where they cut a shape out and then they, they sort of uh, do a negative inflate on the surface. Uh, so it almost feels like kind of a little inset there. So let's go ahead and do uh, some kind of an operation like that. We'll grab the uh, the body here, and I'm going to right click. Sorry, I think this is actually a modify. So we'll do modify and scale, and this is going to be just kind of a, a global uniform scale. And I, I think so. We'll make this something consistent. We'll do like a 0.9, and then I can come over here and grab this piece. We'll go to modify scale and we'll do 0.9 and then we can go ahead and scoot both these pieces back in by selecting them both right clicking and going to move and in this case I want to be uh, moving these things orthographically so I'm going to click this little uh, right here in my viewer and just kind of scoot these guys in just so there's a little bit of, a, of an intersection there and I'll hit OK and it looks like that may be okay. It's a little bit tricky to see now with the, uh, the the current rendering style. So I'm going to go to Visual Style and just take this back to Shaded and kind of see what's going on there. So I think I'm actually going to do a push push pull operation on this outside face. Uh, sorry, press pull. Just kind of slide it in a little bit if I can. It may complain at me. Let's say negative 0.5. No, all right. Because of these uh, these operations, it's it's uh, not going to allow me to do that. But I think I've got a little bit of leeway that I could actually scoot it in. So we'll grab that whole body there and we'll do a move. So let's modify and move, wherever that is. And I'll go to the top view. And I want to kind of make these consistent here. So I'm going to scoot it over. And this is one of those cases where if you zoom in, you, you will get a finer. There we are. So I can get that perfectly set up there. And I can hit OK. So I could try to do the same operation on this piece, which body is it, this one here, or I could just mirror this. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and, and uh, just mirror that piece over. So I will delete it and select this face, or this uh, this uh, body. 
go to modify and this is actually in the create menu mirror so this is going to be automatically selected because I had it selected when I turned the mirror thing on and I would like to use my uh, my origin plane as my mirroring but it's actually hidden so what I need to do is come over and just turn on the light bulb and we'll see it floating right there so I'll click it so I need to go to uh, the selection and then click the mirror and you can see there it is perfectly symmetrical and if I wanted to I could combine these back together and have this kind of a, a, a new feature there that nice new cut so let's go ahead and do that we'll do modify combine so the target body can be this piece and the tool bodies can be multiple objects so I'll go ahead and select both of those we'll do this as a join operation and now it is a single piece now the mirror group will still kind of live there and it's more of a, of a history object uh, if you want to talk to this geometry all you have to do is kind of select this uh, this body 4 group here and you can totally rename this if you want so I could come over here just by double clicking and you know whatever so that is the uh, split body feature. It is pretty great. And the next thing I want to show you is actually here in the Create tab. I'm going to click on this, this little purple ball here, and I'm going to make a form. So when you do that, whatever you had visible kind of gets hidden. If you look over here, we don't actually even see our bodies anymore. The sketches are still here, but uh, we can't really edit anything. What we can do is go to create and then create a box or a cylinder or a sphere or any of these other primitives here. And these are basically like your standard sub D surface. So I'm going to make a box and come over and click the, uh, the horizontal plane here. And then I can draw this box out and you will see it's going to be horizontal by default. And now I can scale it up a little bit and make it a little bit wider if I want. So let's go ahead and hit OK. And if I hit uh, Alt and 1, I will actually go to the um, quote unquote low poly version. And I think it's Alt and 2 takes me into the subdivided version. So it's a little bit hard to edit like this, but if I turn on, let's see, this is going to be in display settings, visual style, and uh, shaded with visible edges only. I can actually select these faces, go to right click and select edit form and move them around. And this is just exactly like you would expect as far as uh, how this, the uh, underlying surface is going to behave. And so this feature is really, really good for things like car hoods or um, pistol handles. That's kind of what I use it for. Because what you can do is if you hold the alt button, you can actually extrude new faces. And just like with uh, any other kind of uh, modeling technique that's similar to this, the closer the edge groups are to each other, the sharper those curves are going to be. So you can also do an insert. I'll go ahead and say OK here. And we'll do, oh, another thing that's actually great is you can turn symmetry on kind of at will. So I'm going to do a mirror internal here. And what it wants is there needs to be kind of two faces that are symmetrical to each other so I can figure out where your middle line is. So I'll grab one of these and then one of these and say OK. And now I have this green line. So what that means is I can do something on this side and it will happen over here. So let's go ahead and uh, add an edge loop in. So we'll go to Modify, Insert Edge. And I think it's actually going to be something like that. I could double click it. And it says, OK, no problem. I get what you want. But you see it doesn't actually update until you say OK. And then it gets uh, kind of a recalculation there on that, uh, that subdivided surface. So let's say I noodled on this for a while, and I was happy with it. And I wanted to go ahead and kind of edit it using the, the original style of modeling, where you make a sketch, and then you extrude a surface, and then you can do cuts, whatever. What you need to do is hit Finish Form. There we are. So it is now geometry uh, in the same way that it's a body. Uh, however, it, it's this is one of the things I'm still not 100% clear on, but you can come back and, and right click on this and go to edit. I think this is sort of editable throughout the entire process, but I've had that editability kind of be a, a, an inconsistent thing. So I think best practices, 
is probably to try to get this thing as close to whatever it is that you want it to be uh, before you hit finish form. But if you do need to change your mind and make some, some adjustments, you can come back to uh, your little form icon here in the history, right click on it and uh, continue making modifications to it. So I think what I will do with, uh, with this shape is just to sort of uh, finish this concept uh, a little bit more as I'm going to do a, uh, I, let's see, if I right click, I don't think, let's see how the press pull works. Yeah, so not so much with the press pull. It looks like it actually might be calculating, so perhaps that is working. Yeah, it didn't really like that. So one thing I know that we can do here, once it kind of catches up with, with what's going on, cancel out of that, is I'm going to make a sketch. So sketch, create sketch. Uh, grab my uh, my work plane here, and we'll go to sketch. We'll make a line, and I'm going to do a, a, a click and drag, and then whatever, just some other some other shape. Whoops! It looks like it needs me to go ahead and do a right click and tell it OK there. And you can see I don't actually have any constraints on this side, but I do on this side. So if I wanted to, I'll go ahead and hide the bodies. I could. Uh, grab my tangent constraint and I'll just grab both of these and I'll go ahead and, and make the necessary adjustments. I'll hit stop sketch and let's see, let me turn the bodies back on and we can do a uh, another split body here. I mean there's all kinds of things you can do but I'll just demonstrate this one more time. So body to split and splitting tool and I can say OK grab this piece, that's going to be body 6, and just for the heck of it, we'll go ahead and delete it. And perhaps it will let me actually do a little bit of a chamfer on this edge. Let's see. Yeah, so that is another issue with the uh, the bodies, is they, they seem to be a little bit more particular about these kinds of operations. The chamfers and the fillets, oh, there we go. That worked out pretty well. So, so there's a couple more things I'd like to show you and we will get to that in the next video.